Hi, my name is Joe and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be taking a look at some tips and tricks here in SolidWorks Electrical 2014. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at some of the design rules that are included in SolidWorks Electrical. One of the most important ones that uh, people bring up all the time is the equipotential conflict. So um, we're going to take a look at this one. So the first thing that we're going to do is add the uh, design rule template um, to our uh, project. So we'll come over here and just say OK. And I access that through uh, the design rules check button here in the reports section of the projects tab. So now it's here in the list. Um, right now there is nothing here because we haven't really checked for any equipotential. Uh, conflicts yet. So if we come and close this, we'll come now into a schematic and if I just briefly draw a wire, um, let's say from this red branch over to this brown branch over here, you'll notice that we get these connection points and nothing happens. Um, for a lot of you, this is what happens when you think you have design rule checks turned on. Um, you, you, know, you, you turn on your report, you come in here and you try it and you say it doesn't work. Uh, actually, the, the real issue is that we have not turned it on yet. So let's go ahead and get rid of that wire. And instead, let's go over to our project settings here. So we'll go to Project tab, Configurations, and go to Project. And on the second tab here in Graphic, you'll notice that there is an equipotential conflicts uh, listing here in this table. And uh, by default, we have like the zigzag line type. Um, the color, I believe, is also this one by default, but I've changed it a couple times here. And then this one right here, this is the last column you got to pay attention to it because it says display, and uh, sometimes this is not checked. So by turning that on and saying OK, now I can come over here, and if I were to draw that same wire again and cross it over here, I get these little symbols that appear that show that I have an equipotential conflict. Now that can mean a lot of things um, depending on the design. It could mean a short, it could mean a redundant wire, it could mean a bridge around another component. Um, the software doesn't really differentiate between what exactly it is causing the equipotential conflict. It's just stating that according to the software, um, the way that it detects equipotential throughout the circuit, um, that this probably is not what you intended or not what you really wanted to do. Um, now let's say that it was. Um, so let's, for example, let's go ahead and get rid of that one. Let's say down here for whatever reason uh, we wanted to have a bridge wire that went between this blue uh, N2 and this blue N3 over here. And so if we were to do that, just draw this wire. Again, I'm not saying that this is a realistic thing you would want to do. Let's just say that you did for whatever reason. And you get this equipotential conflict. Um, one way you could get it, go ahead and sort of ignore that is going by going back up here into the projects tab and just uh, turning that display off again here from the graphic. You could just turn it off and this would go away. Um, now the other option is you could trick the echo potential conflict tool into thinking that this is no longer a conflict. The way that you do that is by changing the numbering. So these wires are uh, numbered by echo potential. So if I go ahead and change this number. Um, let's go to the echo potential properties here, and you can see it's automatically set to N3. If I just toggle this down to 2 and set it to manual mode so that we can override it and say OK, that echo potential conflict symbol is now gone because as far as the software is concerned, um, it doesn't see a conflict anymore. These numbers are all uh, coherent along the same echo potential. So that's one way you could override it if you were so inclined, but we're not. So um, we're going to go ahead and change that guy back. And we'll go ahead and delete those. And now if we were, uh, oh, this one's changed itself here to N3 as well. So let's change this one back. And just to show you now, if I were to take that same wire tool and draw that again, we will once again get our echo potential symbol, a warning there. So let's say that somebody came in here and they didn't really know what they were doing and they just started adding wires a little bit willy-nilly, maybe they were just sloppy they, with their clicks, they missed a couple, or maybe they um, just didn't really understand the design uh, changes that somebody handed to them. Let's just say we had a couple like that. So now we have a couple of obvious echo potential conflicts here on the sheet. Um, we would like to see a report of that, right? Like before we go on to the next revision. So what we can do is come over here to our reporting again by going over to the projects tab 
and uh, design rule checks reports. We can see the three instances of those different equipotential conflicts. So it's treating one instance, second instance, third instance down here. And then we can go ahead and generate a drawing for that so that we have a document here in the list that has a nice little table that displays those. So if this was going on to someone who's going to revise this design, uh, maybe they're the ones who are going to figure out why these equipotentials were left in there by some other engineer or designer. Um, nobody really knows what the story is, but the idea is that here you can get a report that goes ahead and lists out all of those uh, equipotential conflicts and where you can find them. So that is the Equipotential Conflict Design Rule Check in SolidWorks Electrical 2014. Uh, I hope that this uh, tip was uh, helpful for you. And if you like more tips and tricks videos like this, subscribe to the Hawker Systems YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.